kind of way the way Board Patrol works is once you discover there's a group, whether it's just seeing foot traffic or cameras or sensors, uh, from that point you kind of get to the beginning location of where it was identified. Uh, once you're able to identify the tracks and like confirm that there is bodies, uh, you try and identify how many bodies as well, and it's just going to be a kind of a roundabout number based on how much traffic or how much disturbance on the floor. And then from there, you're going to start moving. Uh, most of these groups go in a very particular line of travel, and so if someone say in this location, it's known to be exiting from to, to that area where they go picked up. Um, the agents will kind of go from the beginning and then also kind of um, piggyback on each other and trying to cut off the group. So we're going to right now jump on the ground and, and start looking for sign and see where we're at. This is uh, El Centro Sector's uh, area of operations, and this is the end of the fence. So it's not uncommon, like you can see uh, traffic coming from here on the Mexican side. Just walking here, you can see there's a lot of evidence of that as well. Clothes, bags, water bottles, it could be days old, it could be whatever, a week old, but you could have a vehicle over there. There's a vehicle probably about two miles away from here. He's sitting high vis, high vis is like, uh, sitting in a position where people see you, it's a, it's a form of deterrence. But as uh, the sun goes down, you get a good chance of bodies and groups coming through here. So, I don't think people, too many people get to see the end of it. Mexico, USA. The interesting thing with the border is that every border or every sector has a different kind of traffic. Some, uh, will be known for, for, for bodies, some will be known for, for drugs, uh, and some have traffic that can last days, and some have traffic that'll last 45 minutes to 30 minutes, just fucking boots to the ground once they get over the wall. And so here in, here in El Centro currently, uh, you know, with the, the wall that's 26 feet at times, 30, 30 feet at times, we, we hiked in some of the craziest terrain I've ever freaking worked in my entire damn life, even in, in Afghanistan, this, this terrain was killer. Uh, I saw how dangerous it could potentially be for uh, illegal immigrants, but as well as Border Patrol agents working. <clears throat> I see the need for a Border Star and how it's very important to have a search and rescue team readily available at areas like this. Not only was it cold in the morning, but it's now hot. And so just the change of environment alone is, is very dangerous for anyone. I found it fascinating. I've never worked traffic like this before. The traffic I worked in uh, Del Rio sector uh, was significantly different. This is a lot of terrain to cover, and and I, I just don't know how you can do this successfully. I think they do, um, but if say say the shift, right? So there's these shifts in the in the in immigration. There's a shift throughout the border. And when I was in Del Rio sector, it wasn't considered the hotbed of traffic. At one point, it was uh, down in Naco and down down in Arizona, and then also McAllen started to be a hotbed. So I started getting activated out to McAllen and start working groups out there. <clears throat> and so Del Rio wasn't hot. Currently, right now, Del Rio sector is one of the top sectors for, for bodies coming across. And so, as it shifts and changes, currently right now, El Centro sector it does not have this crazy influx of 300, 400 um, illegal immigrants coming off over at one time. You have onesies, twosies, when to me, in my opinion, that makes it a lot harder to do the job. So, uh, it's been fun. It's been crazy. Uh, I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go see a different border. And, um, and I appreciate that they gave me the opportunity to come check it out.